Now, do you remember, um, there's a special name for this type of situation. What's the name of this solution? What's the name of this type of solution? This is a buffer solution. Oh. Was that an important topic in your course? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you might want to label that that last case in the handout is a buffer solution. The last case above the solid line is the definition of a buffer. Remember that a buffer is when you have both a weak acid and its weak conjugate? Well, that's exactly what we have here. So, this is, so we just, what we just learned is how to solve buffer problems, which will probably be important on the test. So this is how to solve buffer problems. Now, when they talk about buffers, sometimes they say that the weak acid and its weak conjugate, sometimes they say that the weak acid and its conjugate salt. What do they mean by salt? Well, the salt just means an ionic compound. So this is the weak, so this is the, um, this is the conjugate base of formic acid, and this is the conjugate salt of formic acid. But it's really just a technicality, the difference between them, because we're going to ignore the spectator ion in this problem anyway. So for our purposes, the conjugate salt is identical to the conjugate base. Two ways of saying the same thing. All right, now there's a shortcut for these problems. Do you guys remember what the shortcut is? That's right. Um, so I guess you'll be given that formula on the test. So the henderson hasselbach equation is that the pH is both pKa plus log of A minus over A plus. Well, A minus is just a fancy way of putting the conjugate base. And HA is a fancy way of putting the acid. So it's better just to write it like this. Let's try using this approach here as well. What should I plug in for the pKa? The negative log k. Yeah, in this case, they gave us the Ka, so we have to figure out the pKa. That would be. <coughs> Thank you. pKa is the negative log of the Ka. Negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. 3.74. <clears throat> and we have to solve for the KB. Okay. I, don't, I don't think we're going to need that for this problem. Oh, no. There is another version of the Henderson Hasselbach equation that says the pOH equals the pKB plus the log of the acid over the base. But you don't really need that because if you can find the pH, you could always subtract that from 14 to find the pOH if you needed that. So, well, there are some cases where that's more convenient, but for today, I think we'll just stick with this version. Okay. What do I put on the top of this equation? 0.5. Uh, yeah, you put our starting amount of the base, which is 0.5. And on the bottom? 1. Yeah. Uh, now, these are our starting amounts. Of course, again, we're making the approximation that the starting amount will be approximately the same as the ending amount. So if we, if we could put 0.5 plus x and 1 minus x, but then we would just take off the x's again. So when you use the henderson hasselbach equation, we're putting in the starting amounts. All right, and 3.74 plus the log of 0.5 goes 3.44, which, as you say, works, because that's what we got over here. OK, so how do you know which one to use? Well, in this problem, maybe, um, well, the important thing is to see that the henderson hasselbach equation is just a shortcut for using our general approach of the start change end table. The instructors usually want you to realize that. In fact, you can actually prove this equation by taking the log of the equilibrium equation. Um, do we only um, use this when we deal with buffers? Well, um, yes, but they don't have to use the word. That's right. You only, so this is only for buffers, but they don't have to use the word buffer in the problem. All they have to do is give you a problem where you start with both a weak acid and its weak conjugate base. So um, if you see a weak acid and a weak conjugate base, you know it's some sort of buffer. That's right, because that's the definition of a buffer, right? A buffer is when you have both, when you're starting with both the weak acid and its conjugate. What about like weak base and weak conjugate acid? That would be identical. This is a weak base and it's weak conjugate, right? Those are two ways of describing the same thing. We could say here that we have the weak acid, formic acid, and its weak conjugate base, formate. Or we could say that we have the weak base, formate, and we have its weak conjugate acid. Remember we said earlier that Absolutely weak acids always have absolutely weak conjugate bases. So you can also say that absolutely weak bases always have absolutely weak conjugate acids. So there's just two different ways of describing the same thing. Uh, in the handout, how did I describe it? I said 
um, weak acid and weak conjugate base, but I could just as well have said weak base and weak conjugate acid is two ways of saying the same thing. Okay. Maybe I should have put it that way. Okay, so when do, we, when, so, um, when do you use the henderson hasbach equation? When we're in this last case above the thick line on the handout. That's the only time that it applies. So you have to be starting with both. You have to start with a positive amount of the weak acid and a positive amount of its conjugate. That's when you use the henderson hasbach equation. All right. Um, if they had given us, in this case, they gave us the Ka. So maybe it was more natural to use the equilibrium approach. If they had given you the pKa, maybe it would be more natural to use the henderson hasselbach approach. Um, but you can always use either one by going back and forth. It's so much faster to use that approach. Yeah. Well, we didn't have to make the start change end table, for example. So maybe even in this case, it would have been easier to do it this way. Just figure out the pKa from the Ka and just plug in. But your instructor wants you to know that this is just a shortcut for doing it this way. 